Hello music fans, this is my second quarter of 2023 album release radar where I'm going to uh, go through a bunch of album releases that are coming out in the second quarter of 2023. I have about 75 album releases to talk about so I'll try to talk about them quickly. They're mostly in the metal, rock, and progressive music genres and I'll be uh, listening to all of these and for many of them, I'll post my first impressions on my YouTube channel, so subscribe if you want to see what I think about them when they come out. And I'm going to go in chronological order, starting with April 3rd, there's a band called M. Opus releasing At the Mercy of Mananan. This is symphonic progressive rock, and it's the third album by this Irish band. On April 5th, Isles is releasing Beyond Drama. This is Progressive Rock. It's the fifth album by this band from Chile. On April 6th, Brave New World is releasing Spaces Between Silence, Phase 2. This is post-hardcore, and it's the debut album by this American band. On April 7th, Silverstein is releasing Misery Made Me Deluxe, which is a deluxe edition of their Misery Made Me album. This is post-hardcore. This features two new songs added to the end of the original album, plus acoustic, live, and orchestral versions of various songs from the album. And on the same day, April 7th, Lights is releasing Dead. This is going to be an acoustic, or uh, I'm assuming it's going to be an acoustic rendition, uh, reworkings of her song from her 2022 album Pep as she usually does acoustic versions of all her albums. Um, the marketing says this is Pep Gone Dark Mode and shows it being flipped upside down to make Dead. Um, maybe it won't be acoustic, it could be club remixes or another type of remix or reimagining, uh, but I know it's not like net new songs. April 7th, Linkin Park is releasing Meteora 20, which is um, the 20th anniversary of my favorite Linkin Park album, Meteora, it contains unreleased tracks with Chester, who passed away in 2017, rest in peace. Listen to the new song, it sounds like other songs on the Meteora album, so it will be a good hit of nostalgia for anyone who loves that album. April 7th, Angel Vivaldi is releasing Away With Words Part 2. This is an EP, it's instrumental progressive metal with some neoclassical and hard rock influences, and I believe this is the fifth EP by this American Shred guitarist, and check it out if you like instrumental guitar-driven music like Intervals, Animals as Leaders, Polyphia, Pliny, etc. And if you like that, Paul Gilbert's releasing an album on the same day, he's another shredder. He's releasing the Dio album, which is instrumental heavy metal with hard rock and neoclassical shred influences. It's his 18th album. This album features instrumental shred guitar versions of songs that famously featured Ronnie James Dio on vocals. So it features Black Sabbath songs, Rainbow songs, and Dio songs. Also on April 7th, it's a really busy day for music releases that day. Uh, Kite Parade is releasing Retro. This is progressive rock with hard rock and pop influences. It's the second album by this English band. And Matt Dorsey is releasing Let Go on April 7th, progressive pop rock. And it's the debut solo album by this member of the American progressive rock band Sound of Contact. Some songs on this album will feature critically acclaimed drummer Marco Miniman on drums. Fit for an Autopsy is doing a split with Thy Art is Murder and Malevolence called The Aggression Sessions that will be released on April 7th. It's kind of a mini album with a couple songs from each band, uh, with three different bands. Uh, I think they're each doing an original song and each doing a cover, so that'll be interesting. And they're all like deathcore bands. Tribulation is releasing Axis Mundi. On April 7th, this is heavy metal with black metal and occult rock influences, kind of like a black and roll style. It's an EP. Now on to April 14th, we have Atreyu releasing The Hopes of a Spark, which is an EP, and they're a metalcore band. They were once 
great American metalcore band who I feel has kind of lost their way. Uh, they parted ways with their longtime harsh vocalist. In my opinion, their last two albums in a row have been their worst, but their first six albums are all decent. Uh, though the production and performances were a bit shaky and immature on the debut, um, their, their early works are pretty cool. Uh, hopefully they can come back to sounding more like that, we'll see. And then the big one on April 14th, of course, is Metallica with 72 seasons. Uh, thrash metal with some heavy metal and hard rock influences their 11th album they need no introduction also on that day jason beeler and the baron von bielski orchestra is releasing postcards from the asylum this is progressive metal with some alternative and hard rock influences it's their third album some parts are going to be very quirky and experimental prog metal other parts are more accessible hard rock sounds like it'll be good for fans of Devin Townsend and Mr. Bungle because it sounds like a lot of variety and quirkiness and experimentation, some songs being poppy and some being all over the place. April 14th, another busy day for music releases with Alas releasing A Matter of Time, another progressive metal band. It's the second album by this Finnish band. Black Orchid Empire is releasing Tempest Veritas. It's progressive metal of the gent style with some pop and alternative influences. It's the fourth album from this band from the UK. Jesus Peace is releasing So Unknown, another metalcore album. It's the second album by this American band. And Overkill is releasing Scorch. This is thrash metal and it's the 20th album by this US thrash band. Now on to April 21st. Got the Mars Volta releasing Que Dios te, te Madiga Mi Corazon. Uh, forgive my poor Spanish pronunciation there. This is going to be an acoustic rendition of songs from their 2022 self titled album. Jethro Tull is releasing Rock Flute. This is progressive rock and it's their 23rd album. Smashing Pumpkins is releasing Adam Act 3, Alternative Rock with Pop Influences. This is their 12th album. And the Dave Foster Band is releasing Glimmer, a progressive rock album. It's the fourth album by this band from the UK. Silver Moth is releasing Black Bay. This is Alternative Rock with Post Rock Influences. It's their debut album. Uh, their new seven-piece band featuring Mogwai, Stuart, Brathwaite. And last one for April 21st is Melancholia with Hiss Through Rotten Teeth. And this is Deathcore with black metal and thrash metal influences. And it's the debut album by this Australian band. On April 26th, Swollen Teeth is releasing an EP, a self-titled EP. And this is going to be Hardcore Pump. And on April 28th, Lunar Chamber is releasing Shambhalic Vibrations. This is progressive technical death metal with black metal and doom metal influences, and it's the debut album by this American band. April 28th, Crown the Empire is releasing Dogma. This is metalcore with post-hardcore progressive and hard rock influences. It's the fifth album by this American band. And Hawkwind is releasing The Future Never Waits. This is progressive space rock and it's their 35th album. This is a British band that used to feature Lemmy from Motorhead. Enforced is releasing War Remains. This is thrash metal with death metal and hardcore punk influences and it's the third album by this American band. And Iced Earth is releasing two EPs on April 28th, one called Hell Rider and one come, called I Walk Among You. This is kind of more traditional heavy metal with some power metal and thrash metal influences. And these are recordings from a transition phase between two singers, uh, Tim Ripper Owens and his predecessor slash successor, Matt Barlow. And these are recordings from 2007 and 2008. Um, Hell Rider will feature vocals from Tim Ripper Owens and I Walk Among You features vocals from Matt Barlow. So it should be interesting. May 5th, 
Devil Wears Prada is releasing a deluxe version of Color DK, their most recent album. It'll feature two new songs, four acoustic renditions of previous songs, two live versions, and two remixes. I thought the Color DK was an okay album, but nothing special, unfortunately. Maybe their second weakest album yet. Um, my least favorite of their works was The Act. But I think this band peaked way back in 2009 with their album called With Roots Above and Branches Below, which is really great. And I hope one day they go back to the sound of that or, or push the envelope and do some more innovative stuff in a different direction in the future, perhaps more progressive or heavier. I hope they don't go in the more pop or electronic or radio rock or butt rock kind of direction like a lot of their contemporary metalcore bands like Bring Me The Horizon or Architects. Also on May 5th, Vinter C is releasing Woven Into Ashes. This is progressive black metal with some death metal, metalcore, symphonic metal influences. It'll be the third album by this American band. Female vocals here with both singing and screaming, intense guitar playing, fast drumming, lots of energy and brutality, but also beautiful atmosphere and melody. I'm really excited for this one. May 5th, Unearth is releasing The Wretched, The Ruinous. This is Metalcore and it's their eighth album. Also May 5th, Currents is releasing The Death We Seek. Progressive melodic metalcore with some of that gent playing and it's their third album. And on May 5th, Tigers of Pantang is releasing Bloodlines. This is more traditional heavy metal. It's the 13th album by this band from the UK who started way back in 1978 and were part of the new wave of British heavy metal movement. And the last one for May 5th is Winger releasing Seven. This is hard rock with heavy metal and progressive influences. It's their seventh album by this band that started way back in 1987 and was part of the glam metal or hair metal scene, but they have a more progressive vibe to their music that makes them a bit more interesting than many of their contemporaries to me. Let's go on to May 12th. We've got Veil of Maya releasing Mother. This is progressive metal core. Uh, of the Gent variety with some deathcore influences. It's the seventh album by this band. And the Acacia Strain is releasing two albums that day as well. One called Step Into the Light, and one called Failure Will Follow. These will be metalcore with some of that deathcore style. And the second of which, Failure Will Follow, will be have some more sludge metal influences in it. Um, yeah, the, the second one kind of represents their sludgier side and has longer songs. It's like three songs with about a 40 minute runtime, whereas the first one I think is more uh, traditional song lengths. And two more on May 12th. We've got the Amity Affliction releasing Not Without My Ghost. This is melodic metalcore with some post hardcore influences. It's their eighth album. They're a metalcore band from Australia. And Cattle Decapitation is releasing Terracite. This is technical death metal with grindcore influences. It's the eighth album by this American band. May 15th, Mystery is releasing Redemption. This is progressive rock with symphonic and hard rock influences. And it's the eighth album by this Canadian band. And May 19th, we have a lot of good stuff coming out that day. Uh, the progressive rock giants Yes are releasing their new album Mirror to the Sky. It's their 23rd album. They're one of the most popular and best prog rock bands that rose to heights during the classic 70s era of prog rock. And The Ocean is releasing Holocene. This is progressive metal with post metal and sludge metal influences and it's their 10th album. And I'm really excited for this. This might be maybe the one I'm most excited for here. I'm, I don't know, I'm pretty excited to hear what Yes does and hoping they can capture their classic sound. Also really excited for Winter Sea, but yeah, the Ocean Hollow scene should be really great. All their releases have been really solid. And Dave Matthews Band is releasing Walk Around the Moon. This is alternative rock with jazz, folk, and indie influences, and it's the 10th album by this American band. And I like everything they've done, but 
I particularly like their last three albums. I think they're on a bit of a hot streak with those. I might be a little weird in my Dave Matthews band preferences compared to most people, as I think most people like the old stuff more, but I actually have been really liking their new stuff. And the Murlocs are releasing Calm Ya Farm. This is psychedelic rock with some pop and blues influences, and it's the seventh album by this Australian band that features members from King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard and Orb. Arjen Lucasen's Supersonic Revolution is releasing the Golden Age of Music. This is progressive rock with hard rock and heavy metal influences, and it's the first album by this new project by Arjen Lucasen, but he's a veteran in the industry and uh, who you might know from his work on his projects Arion and Star One. And this album is going to be inspired by music from the 70s, from Prague to heavy rock to glam. And the lyrics celebrate memorable things from those times. Uh, that should be pretty cool. The Ring of, I don't know how to pronounce it, The Ring of Gyges, G-Y-G-E-S, is releasing Metamorphosis. This is progressive metal. It's the second album by this Icelandic band. Blindfolded and Led to the Woods is releasing Rejecting Obliteration. This is technical death metal with some progressive and avant-garde influences. It's the fourth album for this band from Christchurch, New Zealand. And Sleep Token is releasing Take Me Back to Eden. This is alternative metal, I guess, with post-metal, progressive, and indie pop influences. Very unique sound, lots of blends of different styles here, so hard to describe it. But it's the third album by this British band. And The Used is releasing Toxic Positivity. This is post-hardcore with alternative rock, pop, punk, emo, screamo influences, and it's their ninth album. Now, moving on to May 26th, we have SUP releasing Okta. This is avant-garde progressive metal with gothic, industrial, doom, and death metal influences, and it's the eighth album by this French band. Arrival of Autumn is releasing Kingdom Undone, and this is Metalcore. It's the third album by this Canadian band. And Elegant Weapons is releasing Horns for Halo. This is heavy metal, and the, this is a debut album by a metal supergroup that features bassist Rex Brown of Pantera, guitarist Richie Faulkner, and drummer Scott Travis, uh, both from Judas Priest, and vocalist Ronnie Romero of Rainbow. So it sounds to me like it'll be some pretty solid, uh, traditional sounding heavy metal. Nothing too special or fancy or exciting, but I think it'll be well executed uh, music by experienced professionals. On to June 2nd, we have Avenged Sevenfold releasing Life is But a Dream, and I'm really excited for this one. I love Avenged Sevenfold. This is hard, uh, hard to describe the genre here because they change up their style quite a bit. Their first two albums were metalcore, then they went kind of more traditional heavy metal, and um, the stage was fairly progressive. That was their most recent album, so this one it could be anywhere from heavy metal with some alternative sprinkled in there, hard rock, progressive rock, metalcore. Um, I expect some cool stuff here. This is their eighth album. And June 2nd, Heiner Solberg, the lead singer from Lepers, is releasing an album called 16. And this is progressive rock with some metal and art rock influences. And it's, I think, his first solo album. Uh, but I really like Leprous. His voice is unique and high-pitched and a bit of an acquired taste, but once you acquire it, he is truly an amazing vocalist. Rival Sons is releasing Dark Fighter. This is hard rock with blues influences, and it's the seventh album by this American band. I think fans of bands like Led Zeppelin will like this. And Lars Frederick Frosley is releasing Fire Fortlinger. This is progressive rock, and it's the debut album, debut solo album from this keyboardist from the Norwegian band Wobbler, who's an amazing progressive rock band. And this album has four rather long songs inspired mainly by medieval and Renaissance music, as well as Italian prog rock from the 70s. 
and Pupil Slicer is releasing Blossom, and this is Mathcore, uh, with a lot of weird influences thrown in from alternative, indie, post-rock, black metal, death metal. And it's the second album by this band from the UK. If you're a fan of Rolo Tomasi, I think you'll like this. It's another female-fronted band who combines mathcore brutality and intensity with beauty and atmosphere and catchiness. Now on to June 9th, Summer Sets is releasing Small Town Story. This is indie folk with pop and rock influences, and it's the debut full-length album by this duo. And they're on my list of things to listen to because uh, Kale Matson went to my high school and he was in my year. Uh, so I like to follow along with any new releases he works on, even though I don't normally talk about this style of music. I do enjoy some of it. Wanted to give them a mention in case it inspires anyone to check them out as uh, independent Canadian musicians need all the marketing support they can get. I'm not sure how much of my audience will actually listen to this as I've mostly been talking about prog metal and prog rock, um, but yeah, check out some indie folk if you're into that. Also on June 9th, Stellar Circuits is releasing Sight to Sound. This is progressive metal. It's the second album by this American band. Scar Symmetry is releasing the Singularity Phase 2 Xenotaph. This is melodic death metal with progressive and power metal influences, and it's the seventh album by the Swedish band. Squid is releasing O Monolith. This is post-rock with punk, experimental rock, new wave, ambient, and progressive influences. It's the second album by this English band. If you're a fan of groups like Black Midi, Black Country, New Road, I think you'll like this. And Extreme is releasing an album called Six which is their sixth album. They're an American band that started way back in 1985. They're kind of hard rock with glam metal and some funk influence. Now on to June 16th. Alt is releasing Abeyance. This is melodic metalcore with post-hardcore, pop, electronic, alternative, hard rock, and groove metal influences. And it's the debut album by this Australian band. I think if you like bands like Architects and Bring Me the Horizon, this sounds a bit like recent music from those bands, uh, but the two singles I heard sound even more exciting than those bands to me. Uh, I've gotten tired of those bands they've, and the direction they've gone in, so it'll be interesting to hear a fresh take on that poppy, electronic, groovy melodic metalcore. Uh, Thai Kata Falk is releasing Alfold. This is post-black metal with avant-garde and experimental rock influences. It's the 11th album by this Hungarian band. Um, I heard the early release single here called Nima Vermic, and I thought the contrast between synthesizers and the intense harsh metal and dissonant riffs sounded cool, so I added it to my list. And Methodras is releasing Human Deception. This is thrash metal and death metal uh, together, kind of, and it's the sixth album by this Italian band. Now on to June 23rd, the second last day on my list here. I've got Pyramaze releasing Bloodlines. This is progressive power metal. It's the seventh album by this Danish band. If you're a fan of bands like Stradivarius, Hammerfall, and Evergrey, check this out. High Priest is releasing Invocation. This is stoner doom metal with hard rock, blues, and southern rock influences, and it's the debut album by this American band. I heard this single called Divinity. I think people who like He Is Legend Queens of the Stone Age and Black Sabbath will like this, and it sounds like a combination of those three bands. And there's a band called Jigong, releasing The Complex In Between. This is instrumental, experimental, psychedelic post-rock with metal and krautrock influences, and it's the second album by this band from Switzerland. They're signed to Pelagic Records, the record label helmed by the members of the great progressive post-metal band The Ocean. That got me interested in hearing this because I love The Ocean and I love uh, Hypnos, who is also signed to that label. And the last day I'm going to talk about here is June 30th. We've got Big Big Train releasing Ingenious Devices. It's an EP. They're a progressive rock band, and it features new versions of a trilogy of revered Big Big Bang, Big Big Train, <laughs> almost said Big Bang Theory. Uh, it contains new versions of 
three of their epic tracks, East Coast Racer, Brooklands, and Voyager. And these tracks prominently feature an elite seven-piece string section recorded at Abbey Road Studios in London. Uh, and apart from the late David Longden lead vocals, which have been compiled from the original album sessions, East Coast Racer is a completely new studio version recorded by the lineup of the band as it was in 2019. Brooklyn's will feature newly recorded drums, bass, and bass pedals, while Voyager includes additional guitar and violin, and all songs have been remixed. And Ingenious Devices includes a previously unreleased orchestral piece called The Book of Ingenious Devices, which links East Coast Racer and Brooklyn's, as well as a live version of Atlantic Cable. So lots of cool stuff here for fans of Big Big Train. And the other two albums that I'm going to talk about from June 30th, one of them is East of the Wall, with their album A Neutral Sound, or Neutral Second. Uh, this is experimental progressive post-metal. It's the sixth album by this band. Uh, for fans of bands like The Ocean and Cult of Luna, imagine if those bands did less screaming and more clean singing, and that's what this sounds like. And then the last album that I'm going to mention here in my second quarter of 2023 album release radar is by the band XO Armor called Nublar. This is progressive melodic metalcore with some gent, with some pop, electronic, and hip-hop influences. It's the second album by this German band. They sing in German, I believe, here, so um, not for those who don't like English, uh, not for those who don't like albums that don't have English lyrics, but if you're interested in hearing some stuff uh, in a foreign language, uh, check it out. Sounds kind of like trap metal, but with catchy, poppy, melodic metalcore hooks from time to time and brutal, genty breakdowns. And that's it. Hope there's some albums in this list that uh, sound interesting to you. I'll try to post all the names of those in the, the description if I remember. Um, and stay tuned to my channel if you want to hear my first impressions when I listen to all of these. I'm not promising that I'll talk about every single one. Some of them are maybe not that interesting to talk about. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned until next time. Peace out.